Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for RedGiantTV.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Red Giant's Hollow Matrix, a tool for creating the effect of holographic imagery, to quickly enhance your projects with very little work. I'll also be using Digital Juice's Motion Designer's Toolkit Number 2, a really awesome library of elements that can be used for creating futuristic screens and interfaces. There's also Motion Designer's Toolkit Number 3 with a similar look so that you can expand your library. You can find Hollow Matrix at RedGiantSoftware.com and you can find the Motion Designer's Toolkits at DigitalJuice.com. So this is the look that we're going for. That's our actress Tess Woodward from Australia uh, playing Neon Flux. Uh, we may have um, borrowed that name from somewhere. I, I don't remember. But uh, she's pressing all these buttons in the air and screens are appearing. Lots of cool stuff. And these are all, of course, from the Digital Juice Library I just mentioned. It's looking pretty cool. So we're going to recreate this pretty quickly and uh, then you'll be able to do it yourself. The first step in our process is to take the live action footage that we shot at Orion Media and drop it into a new composition. Obviously, there has already been some keying and compositing work done, but we aren't going to cover keying and compositing here. Now, the footage was originally shot for the Hollow Matrix commercial, and David Vincent at Outpost Pictures did all of the original screens in that commercial by hand using several Red Giant plugins. But had the Motion Designer's Toolkit 2 existed, we would definitely have used it for a lot of the screen content because it's perfect for that kind of project. So that brings us to our next step in our process, getting the screen footage. So here I am in the Juicer, the free tool from Digital Juice that's used to browse and convert videos in the libraries that Digital Juice created. So uh, for example, I can select the video here and I can see it up here. And if I like it, then I can just drag it over to my batch panel and, uh, and it's ready for conversion when I get to that point. In the meantime, I can continue to browse to other stuff. But I'll point out that there's a little AE tab here. So if you're one of those people that don't love working with stock footage and you like to customize everything, well, you can just click on this and collect the files that were used to generate this video, and then you've got it as an After Effects project. There's also a whole bunch of cool interface displays, and I'm going to be using those as well. And so I can select this one. And oh, there's a little uh, thing here for a plugin that tells me that this particular project uses a plugin, and that's a Trap Code 3D Stroke, also from Red Giant. And I can drag this over to the uh, batch panel for settings and then conversion. Now just to point out that if you don't have the After Effects or you don't even have these uh, these plugins, it doesn't really matter because they do come as videos that are pre-rendered so all you need is to just use the juicer and you can pop them out and drop them into whatever program you're using. Okay, so at this point I've got a whole bunch of footage that's been added to my batch panel and now I'm going to change some of the settings for export and uh, I'll just select the footage and I'll click on settings and I'm not going to get into how the juicer works and the whole spiel there. They have plenty of tutorials on the Digital Juice site that will explain it. But what I will do is uh, set the size of the video to something smaller. Uh, in this case, I'm working at a really small resolution for this project. Um, originally shot in high def, but we're going to work at uh, I'm working at 640 by 360 for this project. So let me set these screens down to something really small, 320, and uh, this will update. And then also I will set the um, the frame rate to 24 frames per second, which is uh, what the project is working at. And that's pretty much what I need to do uh, for this. And I'll go through each of the different, uh, pro the different uh, videos here, and I'll just set them as needed. And once I'm done, then I'll just click on Render All. So jumping ahead in time, here I am in After Effects. I've already exported all of my footage from the juicer, and uh, I've dropped them into After Effects. I also renamed them so that they'd be easier to work with. I've got Screen 1, Screen 2, uh, Screen Large for something that's going to take up the entire screen, and also these circles, a um, whole bunch of different things. And uh, let's get into it. So for example, I've got our hand up here, and I know that I want to have some kind of element there. So let me grab these circles, and I'll drop them right over her hand. Now, part of the problem is that they start to appear here, and then uh, they kind of hold there for a long time. So instead, what I'd rather do is end it here. So I'll hit my right bracket key. And so at this point, she'll be letting go, and they disappear. And obviously, this is a bit too big. So let me scale this down maybe to 35%, maybe even a little smaller, 33%. That looks good. So she pulls her hand away, and, uh, and there we go, and it's gone. Uh, at the same point, right about here, I want to have, because she's starting to look back and she's going to touch something in the air, maybe I'll put in another screen uh, that kind of comes in. Let's grab hold of screen one, and I'll drop that in, and I'll put this up here, and uh, let's see, she touches it, 
you know, I want that. Okay, so here's what we'll do. I want that dot to appear right over her hand. Um, let me scale this down a bit. And I want that dot to appear right where she strikes, but I also want it to happen right when she strikes a screen, and that's at about 114. So let me just move this back until that dot is not there. There we go. So as she touches it, there the dot appears. And if you don't want to be stuck using these elements, remember you can always use the original After Effects project files and uh, open them in here as compositions and do this stuff uh, working here, or you can just add other elements like these circles on top of these screens. So with that done, let's see what we've got. Just do a quick RAM preview, see what we've got there. She lets go. She touches the button. Okay, and then there's another screen over here. I'm going to jump ahead in time to where I've got all this stuff set up and animated. Okay, so here I am with everything already added into the scene, and I can do a quick RAM preview just to see what I've got. So, you know, there's nothing fancy going on here. I have a bunch of screens set up. Um, a few of them are animated to move out from other screens. They scale up, they move out, and uh, some of the uh, opacity has been reduced just so that, you know, there's a little bit of subtlety in it. But it's really nothing special. It just looks really cool because of the elements that we're using. And uh, what I can do here is um, I do want to make a couple of changes, just things that I note that will help uh, smooth out the animation a bit. For example, um, we've got uh, these screens moving out. Let's just choose screen number two, for example, and I'll solo that so you can see it. Screen number two flies out of screen number one, but uh, it kind of happens very robotically. So if I hit U to reveal the keyframes, you can see that it's a, it's a linear keyframe. And I can select this for screen three and four as well. And I'll hit U to reveal their keyframes. And what I'll do is I'll select their second set of keyframes, so the ones where it ends. And I will uh, choose Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease In. And what that does is that makes the footage uh, slow down and stop over time. So it starts out quickly and then slows down. Now it's only 10 frames of animation, so you may not see much difference, but it is a little bit subtle, but it's, it's a smoother way to do things. So we can do this now, and you can see there it goes. It slows down and stops. And uh, you know what else? Let's add in some motion blur for these layers and just make sure the comps motion blur is turned on. And again, if I do a preview now, you can see it's got some nice blur flying out of there. So let me unsolo this layer, and let's do a quick RAM preview here. And it's looking good. One thing else that I'd like to do is to select all of the layers, and I will, uh, with them selected, I'm going to set their transfer mode, or their blending mode, from normal to screen, which just makes them uh, a little additive slightly so that they run over each other and they get a little brighter where they're running over each other. It's very subtle. You can also try the add transfer mode, which makes things much brighter. But I'm going to stick to the screen mode here. And then I want to put the hollow matrix effect on top of all of this, but we really need to have them into one put into one composition. So I'll select them all and I'll choose uh, layer, pre-compose, and I'll call this screens. And we'll set set it to move all attributes into the new composition so everything goes in there. And we don't need to bother opening the new composition because uh, we're going to work with just the comp at the top level. So I'll click OK. And uh, they're back. Uh, everything is in the uh, pre-comp. But as you can see, we've got we've got it all happening as one layer instead of the seven or eight that I had in there. OK, so next, let's add Hollow Matrix to the screens. Now, Hollow Matrix is an effect that works a little differently than other effects. Normally, you would just choose Effect and then just choose one of the effects from the menus here. I am going to choose Window and go down to the very bottom. You can't see it here in the capture, but uh, it's called Hollow Matrix. Just click on that, and it brings up this little dialog. I'll drop this up here so that's part of our interface. And I will then click on, I'll select my footage, and click on Apply Hollow Matrix. And as you can see, it creates these screens. Now we've got different settings that we could use. I've got these, uh, right now it sets the default settings. But I can go, why don't I go with uh, hologram reception, let's say hologram, hmm, OK reception blue. And I'll click on apply preset. And it gives me a little bit more of a blue uh, look to it. And let's see how that looks. Just do a RAM preview. And uh, it's looking good, except, you know, I'm noticing that the frame rate's a bit off. Uh, by default, Hollow Matrix is set to 10 frames per second, but my footage is at 24. And while it's cool for holograms to have skippy and steppy kind of looks, in this case, I'd rather keep it at the 24 frames per second. So let me get into my effects controls for Hollow Matrix, 
and we'll set my frame rate setting down to uh, from 10. We'll bring it up to 24 frames per second. And uh, if we do a RAM preview now, we can see that every single frame of animation is taking place. And let's, uh, let's let me get this to the point where we can see it. And uh, it's looking good. Cool, looking nice. I don't love the blue color over the background, but we're going to do some general color correction and uh, color looks to this whole thing that'll really change that overall. Now, I've got uh, one thing that I, I kind of want to see is a little bit of an interference ghost so that like we'll get a doubling of the image occasionally. And I've just turned that on, use interference ghost, and you can see we get this sort of flashing look where it's doubling the image. And uh, that's looking pretty good, but I think it's happening a little bit too often. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll go into my interference ghost settings, and uh, that's down here, interference ghost settings. I'll get in there and I'll set the percent chance of the interference. I'll go from 25% down to 10%, and that'll make it happen a lot less over time. So do a preview and... Yeah, looking already better. I can see that's better. It flashes occasionally, but not nearly as often. Um, yeah, much better. Good, good. Okay, so next, let's do some color uh, correction or just adding some looks to it to change the mood and feel of the whole piece. So I'll choose Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and that's a layer that affects every layer below itself, but in and of itself, the adjustment layer can't be seen. And then I will apply Magic Bullet Looks. So I'll choose Effect, Magic Bullet, and I'll choose Looks. And Magic Bullet Looks is a great plugin for adding uh, different looks and different effects to your footage. So let me click on Edit to get into Magic Bullet Looks. And that brings me into the Looks Builder where I can preview and choose different looks for my footage. So let me uh, jump in here and we've got a whole bunch of different tabs. You've got your basic settings, cool and warm and whatnot. But what I'd like to focus on is one of the music video ones. It's called uh, Berlin. I love that one. It kind of uh, removes uh, all the color except for the skin tones and keeps it uh, everything else a pale blue. So looking pretty good. And I'll click OK. And uh, we're looking good. Although, you know, like I said before, the hollow matrix colors, not quite what I want. Let's just bring everything out to this point. Um, and they're also a bit bright. So let me select this. And we'll go into our color brightness settings. And I'll start grabbing some color from different areas of the background just so that I can uh, match it a little better. Let's get my color highlights. I'll pull from right about here. And my color midtones. Let me grab this. I like that. And that brings me to a, a much better place color-wise. Everything sort of matches a bit better. And so that's good. And what I'll also do is because this stuff is getting really heavy here, it's very bright and it's uh, really pushing through. Why don't I set it to opacity down? Something like 60. And uh, that's looking pretty good. And you know, I want to do a little more to the color. Instead of uh, going back into Magic Bullet Looks and making changes to that uh, settings that we've got there, instead I'm just going to add in another uh, adjustment layer. So I'll choose Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And um, again, I'll choose to add Magic Bullet Looks. And I'll jump in there. And I'll use a setting from popular films called Bistrosity, which is going to be added on top of what we've already got. So I'll choose that. And as you can see, we've got some very uh, sharp, blown out lights and just cool. And it's very futuristic and, uh, you know, glary. And, you know, it's got some nice stuff going on there. Click OK and um, do a RAM preview now. And we'll see our final result. OK, looking pretty cool. And uh, in this RAM preview, though, there is one thing that I noticed kind of lacks, like a little camera motion and sort of simulated 3D. You could work with After Effects 3D here and have made all the layers 3D, but in this case, uh, this is a simple uh, thing to do just to do with 2D and some scaling and some position changes. So the first thing I'm going to do is select my screen layer here and I'll make it a child of my, of my background footage and I'll hit S and Shift P to bring up the scale and the position and I'll set their scale and position here. I'll jump to the last frame and why don't I scale this up to 108% bring it up and we'll move the position down just a bit so that it, it's just right at the top so it kind of moves forward and down just slightly maybe even a tiny bit lower okay perfect and 
even though the screens move with our background footage, to give it a little more depth, I'm going to have them scale up slightly over time as well. So I'll select their position and their scale. And again, I'll set these up to, I don't know, 106%. And also we'll move them down. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. And now let's do a RAM preview. And now it's looking a little more dramatic. The camera's pulling in and there's a bit of 3D-ness about it. Looking good. Don't forget, you can download a trial of Red Giant's Hollow Matrix at redgiantsoftware.com and you can get the Motion Designers Toolkit 2 and 3 at digitaljuice.com. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for redgianttv.com. See you next time.